So I'm going to revert back to the original location. Again, there. If I want to put these together, where do you think that I want to go to on this file? Go to assemble, right? I've got some options here. So I can create new components that are that are blank. So if I just create a standard component, internal means it's going to be in this file. External means it's going to save it as its own file. I don't want to do that. I don't want it internal. I want to stay inside of this this file here in this design. If I had a design, a body that I created, I could do from body and pick that body. I don't need to do that. I need to pick a parent. So where does this thing live? Is it going to be a, 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 component, a component within the, this, assembly, this assembly? Or am I going to make it a component within another assembly? So I can have nested subassemblies. And we'll do more about that um, in a couple of weeks, where you can have subassemblies that go together to make bigger assemblies and things like that. But I'm just going to say internal, and I can give it a name here if I wanted, and say OK. And there's also the box button here to activate it or not. So if I say activate, I'm going to graze everything else out, and now I have just that. And so now if I draw something, I can, I can pick a face of an, of an existing part or not, and let's say I just want to have a want it to line up at the top of that. See if that has all that, all that stuff selected. So I just want to select here and make all that construction and make that line construction too. So that way <coughs> I just select my, my thing. And when I extrude this, whatever. If I want just this component to be this, since I already have the component made, I can make this just a body. If I make this a component, it's going to make another component underneath this component. You can see the symbol change there on, on test. It changed to being a subassembly. Because now I'm making a component within that component. If I tell it to be body, now, now it's just going to be the body of that component. So it goes back to just being a single component. I can say OK. If I go back up here, I can click on this and see everything again. But within each component, there's always going to be a folder for bodies with a body. The component is just like a container. But the body is the actual solid model. Okay? So the body is a solid model. The component is a container that can contain bodies or other components to help kind of organize them. Kind of, yeah. <clears throat> but the, the component is what we can use to relate to other components. Bodies are just where they are. A body is a body, it's just they're part of the thing. But it can't move relative to other bodies within that component. <clears throat> so, like if I was, there's something. Here's a flash drive, right? If I'm modeling this flash drive, and I'm going to buy this as is, and I'm not, I'm not putting this together, I'm not using it. I'm just going to have it. I'm never going to take it apart. But I want to use it in my assemblies. This is going to be one component with a bunch of bodies. But I want those bodies to always stay where they are, and I can assign different materials to it. But this is the thing, right? Even though there's other components within this, I'll say this is one component with a bunch of bodies inside of it. And that's how I'm going to work with it. So it's only one thing I have to, one package that I move around, right? If I was making this, every single piece inside of here would be a separate component, right? So now I'm making the pieces, I have to have them separate, and put them together. So that's the difference. So if, it, if it's something that you're going to have and you're never going to take it apart, it's always going to be together, it can be one component with multiple bodies. But if you're going to be making the pieces or you're going to be putting those things together, then they each need to be separate components. Okay. Does that make sense? So you can see this is a component, so I can move that around there. But if I want to start putting things together, this thing right here, so if I look at a symbol, 
I have joints. I have duplicate width joints. I have asthma joints, joint origins, rigid groups, blah, blah, blah. So if I want to connect one thing to another thing, I'm going to use a joint. This is going to be like things are not lined up the way they should be. I want to move them and line them up. I'm going to use a joint for that. Duplicate with joints is this. If I've already added a joint and lines to pop, but now I want to create multiples of that, then I can use this. Asbel joint means that I drew it in the right spot, and I just want to lock it to where it is. The joint origin is, oh, we'll talk about that in a minute. And a rigid group is I have a bunch of stuff that's already different components, but I want them to stay together the way they are. I don't care about individual connections. I just want this whole group to stay aligned like it is. So a lot of times if you import something that has multiple components within it, and you want to be able to move that thing without having to add 1,500 joints between, all, like a circuit board. In a circuit board, it's going to have a bunch of components on it, and, but you don't want to have to add joints for every single one of those pairs of things. You can just make it a whole group, and it'll lock the whole thing together and move around. And so that's what, what that is. Um, is there anything here that I have drawn already in the correct spot? No? Didn't I just draw this in the exact spot that I want it to be? This component here, the test piece. Didn't I draw it on the face of this? And I told it to line up the top edge. So I drew that exactly where I want it to be. So I can just tell it to use an as-built joint between this component and that component. And by default, the type of joint is a rigid joint. So it means that those things are not going to move. If I hit preview motion, Gonna show that like that thing can't move, it's just gonna stay there. I can say okay, and now if I grab this, those things are stuck together. Make note to go back to where it was. So some of the other types of joints, and we'll get to them. If I go, now I want to put this on here. Set up for these rails where these little nubs are supposed to go in those holes. And so I'm going to hit, go back, and I'm going to tell it that I want to create a regular joint. And so now it's going to ask me for my two components. And on those components, I can pick how I want my origin. So how do I want to grab this thing? And so you can see it's got a little, on the preview, it's got a little circle. It's got a little, it's got a little filled area, and then the, the yellow or the the blue, green, and red axis, right? And so when I pick on a part, it's going to make with that circle. So when I pick on one component, I'm going to have that circle. I'm going to pick the other component, I'm going to have that circle also. And it's going to take those two circles and stick them together. So if one circle's this way, one's this way, it's going to flip it over and make it line up. So I can either do it just using this mode. And if I do that, you can see as I come over to this part, if I'm on the face, I just see the symbol. But if I and I move close to the midpoint of an edge, a corner, or the center of the face, it's going to snap to that thing. If I'm on an edge, look at it now. It's oriented perpendicular to the edge. And again, I can slide it there and snap it to the middle or to a vertex. If I go on this face, it's lined up with that face now. If I'm on a flat face, it's going to line up with the face. If I'm on an edge, it's going to be perpendicular to the edge. If I just click in some spot here where it's not near one of the snaps, now if I can just move my mouse around, I'm not holding the button, I can move the mouse, mouse around and kind of tell it which one I want to go to. So sometimes if like the center of the thing is in, in, a, in a hole or something, you can't grab onto that just by clicking it because it's not selecting the face anymore. You can just pick the face and then Go over to it. Okay. I can also do between two faces. So I can tell it I want to put between these two faces here. And now for the snap, I can tell it where I want to snap. So now it's the same same things, the center of the face, the top edge, you know, the corners, whatever. But it's gonna make it halfway between the two faces. 
but lined up with the two faces. Or I can do it two edges, so I can pick two edges here, and it's going to put it where those two edges intersect. Usually, we'll use the simple one. But sometimes that, the between two faces, is useful for centering things, things like that. Okay? Does that make sense? So let me stick this over here. So I'm going to grab just the center of that hole, right? That's a good, we line stuff up with holes a lot of times, right? Trying to make a screw go through, it needs to line up the hole. So I'm going to grab the circle there. And just to show you that you can, it'll flip things around, I'm going to grab the circle there. And uh oh, it didn't, it didn't flip it, it just moved it over. But there's a flip button here, flip. Now it flipped it. Now instead of those two faces, those two circles lining up with each other, now they're opposed to each other. And then I can use this handle here and rotate it around so that it's lined up the way I want it to be lined up. Okay? Does that make sense? So now, say okay. And now, it won't move. Why won't that move? But what? But when I had this one to it, it would move. It's a harder thing. Yeah, because this bar is grounded, right? Yeah. So this one cannot move because it's it's grounded. Here. So now this stuff can't move. I'm gonna go back in, edit that joint, and show you some of the other options that we have. So by default, the connection type is a rigid joint. So it locks down all six degrees of freedom. So things can have what we call six degrees of freedom. It can move in three axes, and it can rotate around those three axes, right? So it can move in the XY plane, or rotate around the, the X axis, or the Y axis, or the axis, or whatever, right? So we have to be able to, to lock it down in all, all ranges of motion. So the rigid locks down all of that, the location and rotation all at once. I can also set a revolute joint, where now it's setting up, it's locking the position, but it's allowing it to revolve around one axis. And it could be whichever axis I pick. So that's probably not a, a useful one, right? The Z axis is usually the more useful. Can't ro really rotate that way, because it's gonna run into stuff. But I could tell it I want it to be around the Z axis. And now I can take this part, and I can drag it around and see how it moves. Because if I just put a screw through there, right, it would be able to do this. Except, you know, it has that thing right there. But then I can revert it, and it goes back to where it should be. <laughs> so I can also, just to show you the different types of motions, there's also a slider joint, where now you can tell it to slide in a certain direction. So last week we were talking about the, the lid, that little lid to go in. I'd make that lid, and I'd make it a slider, so I could, I could pull it out. And again, you can tell which direction you want it to be able to slide. You have cylindrical joints where it can go, it can move along the axis and rotate around that same axis. So rotate and, and slide along that same, same axis. You have a pin and slot where it can move one way and rotate around a different axis. We have planar where it just has to stay on that same plane. In a ball where it just constrained to that one point, we can, so the location is fixed, but the, all the rotation is available. Okay? So those are the different types of motion that we have available to us. Most of the time, rigid, revolute, and slider are the most common ones we use. Most of them are rigid. We can also use revolute and slider for you know, hinges or drawers or stuff like that. So make that back to rigid, say okay. I'll do another joint. Grab this, so I wanna put the, the, so you always are grabbing what you wanna line up with what else. I'm gonna pick either the cylinder here or that edge. I pick like here, that doesn't really help me line up the screw, right? So I want to pick the center of that. So if I pick the edge here, or the cylinder there, the snap is going right to the bottom of the head. 
know, so once I pick it, it turns gray. I can't pick anything else on it. Also, that first thing that I pick, usually, sometimes it'll make the, the things that are already grounded go away. The reason it's not. Pick there. Now I can tell where I want to go. And flip it. There we go. And that's grew. So you can see that this, this bolt actually has multiple bodies in it. So it has one body of the bolt, one body of the nut, one body of the washer, and one body of a second washer that's overlapping. So take that one off. Kind of adjustments for you have that. But I could also move those individual bodies if I needed to. Maybe I should probably bring all those on. And, and now is when we could use move, slide those out there. Because now I'm just moving those bodies within the component. But a better thing would just have those as components also. But this is a, a single purchase part that has all of that stuff. So when I make my drawing, I don't want it to show each of those individual things. I want to call out that assembly. You know, buy one of these things. But I could also break those apart and tell it, yeah, I do want you to call out, I want this many of this screw, and I want this many of this wash, and this many of that. I can put them on individually also. So it kind of depends on how you want it to show on the drawings. Okay? But as I'm making, I'm putting things together, let's say I want to put this on top of here, just for, for no reason. And I want it to line up the same way. So it has the little indent here. I want that same indent to line up over here. What would be a good way to do that? So I start my joint command. What should I grab? Something on the top face, right? So something that you know is going to stay the same. So maybe the middle of that edge right there, right? Sure. So that's an easy thing to see. If I pick here, that corner, that's fine. But I have to pick that same corner over here. So it would have to be that corner. Right? Okay. And that's the thing where sometimes it's easy to, to pick the opposite side. So if you're picking middle things, it becomes a little easier because the middle is always the middle, right? You know, it's the middle there, middle there. If I pick here, is it, what's, is it gonna give me what I want? No, because it's pointing sideways now, right? I wanna make sure that I'm pointing the same direction so it comes over so that I can just rotate it. If I had picked here, now look at it. I can rotate that way, but I can't change which direction it's facing. So get rid of just X out of it, take that top center piece, and then rotate it so it's aligned the correct way. And you're pretty much gonna have to do that on all of them. You're either going to have to flip it or rotate it when you're putting stuff together. So just, no, okay, I'm going to, I pick what I want to go together, and now I can rotate or flip as needed to get the right thing. Okay? So, here, I want a new one of these. What should I do? So I want another one of these pieces. So I can right click on it and see my options. Uh, yeah, I've got a copy here. So probably want to do that. This is also where I'll use, so we can just control C, control V, put it in. Or I could use the move and copy here. Make sure you pick components. Pick it. Oh, it doesn't like that because it's grounded. The moving copy doesn't like to copy something that's grounded. Forgot about that. For other things, though, you can use the moving copy. Make sure you hit create a copy first. 
and then you can drag it over and say, okay, now it makes another one. Oh. But the easiest way that I always use is control C, control V. You can do how to move it around as you place it. Sometimes it'll just know where it is. Sometimes it'll ask you to capture position. And if that case, I just say revert and I just leave it where it was. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I'll just want to right click on that until to unground. So there we go. So I have that. But what if I want this one to be shorter? How can I make this shorter? Because right, right now it's four feet long. I only want it to be three feet. Yeah. I can just go and extrude and grab the end of this and just negative 12, right? Uh-oh. What? Because look, it's pull together framing with a colon one, pull together framing with a colon two. Components are always identical to each other. So maybe that's not what I want to do. So I'm going to take that out. And so this is where bodies come into play. Because within this, I have a body, right? So if I just make a new component, I'm just going to make it up there and call it short rail. And I don't need to activate it. I'm just going to say, OK. I have this. That new component has no bodies. Okay. But I can take this body here copy it, go onto this component, and paste it. So now I can just turn this one off. So my short rail is there. If I turn the long rail back on, it's there. Okay. So you can copy bodies from within one component into another component. And now you can make changes to it. And they're not tied to each other anymore. Okay? So be able to, to, like, oh, I want to copy this one. I want to be able to make it mostly the same, but a little different. Now I can copy it. So kind of another use of that is here, I've got this box. If I just copy this component, then I add a fillet to it. Both with the fillet, right? I right click on it. I don't have any option. If you have the history turned off, there's an option called make independent. But if you have the history turned on, that option's not, not here. But let's say I want another copy of this, but I want it to be, I still want it to have this fillet, but I want to add an extra hole to it. Now I can create a new component under the parent there. Call it. So no bodies within this. So I can just go here, grab this body, copy it, go onto this one, and paste it. Now I can move that new component. There's new over there. Okay. So just for this, I want to capture it just so we can see. And now I put a hole in this one. It doesn't affect those. But if I go back in time and edit the fillet, It does carry through because that fillet was made before I copied the component, right? I copied it here, but the fillet was made there. So even if I go back in time for the copy, and now I put a hole in on this side, then I go back and forward, the hole's there. But if I put Nothing in now, it doesn't affect it because it's happening after the copy. So remember your timeline. You can go forward and backward in time, and if you make changes before you make the copy, or you make a pattern or a mirror, then you get that same thing. Okay? So also on these, as we're working on things, say, I have this whole so that way it's not even, right? 
if I want to make a, if I want to use a second one of something and it's going to be exactly the same, I want to make sure I copy that thing. Right? So if I want multiple of these or multiple of these, now copy paste, put it in. It's the exact same, right? And so it's new one, new two. So, but if I, you know, started pattern, if I, um, Mirrored this to the other side. I mirrored this one that's the same. So that pull all the way through. Right? So if I did a mirror of this one across there, these two are still identical, right? But look at the names. So it's component one and component one mirror. So now if I put it in my, my, my drawing, if I go back to my drawings here, those would show up kind of like this page where each of those would be a different thing. Even though they're exactly the same. It wouldn't add the quantity like on this page where it's one, one component with three instances of that component. But on this one, where it is, I do want a left and a right side version, then I would want to do that. Because then I would, I could have this new left, and then I'd have new right. Now these two are distinct and different parts, right? Now I wanted to have new left, all that new right. Right, so I'd, have, I'd name it something like that. Because these are two distinct parts, they're not the same. But if I go back before the mirror and make any changes to one, it's gonna affect the other. Right, if I go up here and add another hole in here. It's gonna affect it there, okay? So we wanna make sure when we're, we're doing things with our, our parts that we copy them appropriately. Um, and then here, I've got this new piece here. Now I want to move it going up there. I'm going to turn off the, that one so I can see what I'm doing. And it looks like it needs to be the third hole up. So I'm going to do a joint. The third hole, third hole, rotate it 90 degrees, flip it. I can turn that back on and off a little bit. That was supposed to work. That bracket's not the right one. I'm going to undo that. I'm just going to get rid of that short rail for now. But I wanted to show you the copying. So if I want to copy this, the screw, I use the duplicate with joints, pick that screw, and then pick the same place that it was copied from. Hit OK. Now it's got a new one there. Right? So if I had done a joint from or that, or that, I could copy joints, that screw, the center of that thing. And uh oh, it's going the wrong way. Sometimes it does that. But there's a little free icon here. And just say flip. So the little flip button's there at the end. Now it's going the right way. And there we go. Okay. So we want to just, for when we're making copies of things, we want to actually use the copy command. If it's exactly the same, copy it or use the duplicate with joints. Um, if I do a pattern of it, or a pattern of the component, it does give me the same thing. So there's colon two, colon three. So that's doing a pattern is okay also. But look, they're not strained. You pattern them and they don't get doesn't copy the joints for them. So then what would I do on these 
If I know they're in the right spot, what what kind of joint would I add? No? Yeah, you could do a rigid body group. So I could go assemble rigid group. Just pick those, those components there and say, okay, now they're stuck. So one time I can do all of them. So I could just do the pattern and do them to each other or just, you know, everything in the pattern, pick it. Say, okay, so now those are all stuck. So if I move that first one here, Those all move with that one. So I could do that. So any questions? No? All right.